Uh, Hamza, uh, some people calling City lucky today. I don't think you were personally. You you nearly always come through the, these games. But how did you see it personally, brother? I think I think that's what champions are made of. I think when you when you win four in a row, there's a reason why you you, you know you're not scared to win. You expect to win. You can take a two nil lead, one nil lead. How many times have we seen City one nil down? Lucky. You don't win lucky. You don't win it like that. Pep Guardiola does it. He's not lucky. He's not by chance. When you're great, Terry, you're just overconfident. And it ho often happens because City are very confident coming to a season. Beginning, they often falter. We saw them last year, the season before that, when they lost to Brentford. And they lost to, they were drawing to the likes of Crystal Palace. They were 2-0 up last year. And, and City fans were pulling their hair. But it's Pep Guardiola. It's simple. It's relaxed. It's relaxed settings. It's like Real Madrid. They can be one nil up. They can be one nil down, two nil down. You know the remontada is gonna come back. Same as City. Those are the two teams that you know. Yeah, I just knew straight away. There's full of leadership there. Lions. My players are full. Lions completely. They know, bro. As soon as Fulham went one nil up, I thought I've seen it before. Brentford did it. <laughs> You're gonna get slapped. And to me, I like the way they play today because they grinded result out. Rather than, you know, we thrush them. Like today, the feeling is Kovacic, what a performance. Chelsea fans are saying, oh, Hamza, oh, do you regret Cole Palmer? Do you regret Kovacic? Because you got Enzo in midfield. <laughs> you spent 200 million in midfield. Yeah, you spent 200 million and sold a guy for 20 million. And he's playing that like this. He's got me already three goals. I'm weak without Rodri. They said, it's Rodri FC. Now it's becoming Kovacic FC, is it? So Kovacic there shows me why he's an elite midfielder. Comes there as a leader. Say, Hamza, don't worry. Rodri ain't here. KDB ain't here, but I'm here. Takes that responsibility and say, I'll get you the goals. Two goals. And you know what? Give I'll give credit to Pep. Because sometimes you lose the hunger. How many times? This is why elite managers are respect Ferguson and Pep. Because... You lose that hunger, you win three or four. How do you, how do you again motivate these guys? How does it, because Terry, I've won games, sometimes like seven games in, in an amateur side. And I become arrogant, I say, this, these guys are shit, I'm gonna beat them. But these guys are still hungry. And I'm thinking, Fulham are a top team there that they hardly lose. City have gone 50 games unbeaten. 50 games unbeaten, deep it. 50 games unbeaten at home. 30 games they've gone unbeaten overall. 50 at home. 50. People say Bernabeu is scary. People say Bernabeu is scary. Etihad, I've always told people, Etihad is intimidating. Etihad is a different level. If you come and get a win at Etihad, what do you think Arsenal fans, Arsenal players fell to the floor? They thought, oh my God, it's going to be a historic win. Oh my God, at last, I can't believe it. I'm going to have to tell my children one day, I've won at Etihad draw so that's why i say i say the at etihad we don't lose to get a draw is a disgrace today's performance i give credit to every city players like you did well today and some city fans are upset because they say we are lucky lucky it's adam Traoré's fault he went through on goal like a fool missing those chances yeah it is four yeah how many times he shouldn't be giving those chances to me i'm seeing city Played Fulham, win comfortably. I'm saying Arsenal played a bottom side that Man United beat Southampton 3 0. Man United, that Terry Cusses, 10 hard out, 10 hard, won 3 0 wow. at their wow. home. No one talked about, oh, Bruno Fernandes world class. No, no, no. You're already bringing, oh, Saka's world class because he scored against Southampton. And, and he's, I'm thinking, bro, world class, I just wanted to answer that question because that upset me. World class, the definition of world class, you ask people who've watched football for a long time. You don't create your own definition because you're a Gen Z generation. I create, because I'm a Gen Z, and I saw, I saw Ricky Lambert. I'm sorry. 
People saw Zidane, people saw Lucedo, they saw Edgar David. They never even used to call David Beckham world class. And David yes, Beckham was yes, winning yes, games yes, in the Champions League final yes, in 1999. That wins them the Champions League final. Dave, no David, David Beckham was called world class. What are you talking about? Yeah, I, I know, I know. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. A, world class definition is you're the best. You are put you in the pedestal with those guys. I name you. If I call Zidane world class, can you imagine? You name Zidane and Romario and Ronaldo and Rivaldo and Ronaldo, and then you call the guy that's not won a Premier League world class. Really have some, like, I'm thinking, people don't have shame, literally. People don't have, I don't, do you know how many world class players I've got? I said, Haaland, KDB, Rodri, before we won the Champions League. Then I put Bernardo there. Last year, Foden is just about getting there. Foden, because of, he carried me to the league. And he was that instrumental. Saka boy, Foden's got six Premier Leagues. I didn't call him world class. Why should I call your guy world class? That means if I call Saka world class, I'm bringing Doku, Buemos coming through. I, I, I'm through. enjoying the rant, but I do want to say, I, I, I tried to get off of Arsenal so we could speak a bit about City. You've taken it straight back to Arsenal, which is, I just want to make sure no one accuses me of making this bit about Arsenal. Uh, v, do, do you agree with Hamza that today was just normal? Or do you feel... As though it was, um, it you were a bit lucky today. How do you see it, mate? No, I definitely don't see it as luck. Although we were playing what a six place Fulham, so it was going to be a, a challenging game. And Triores always seem to take a sensu bean or something before the match and give us problems. So he was, um, he had a chance, he had a chance to score often actually against us. And Ederson stood well in the as keeper and defended and kept the ball out of the net. I think that the deflection to make the game a lot more tense um, was unfortunate. But I was I was really happy with how we played because again, this is this is Fulham. It's not Southampton in terms of what we had to deal with today. But when some City fans are concerned, it's because we we aren't free flowing yet. We we don't. Rodri's gone is going to be impactful on the squad, and we're not going to have that that rhythm in terms of how we break teams down, how we score. But I thought Kovacic had a fantastic game. He was man of the match for a reason. Um, he did his best Rodri impersonation as he could. And those those goals arriving at the top of the 18-yard box late, taking his chances, we're going to need a lot more of that. So we deserve this win. We deserved it. Um, hmm. Our attack, though, Terry. We need, we need, to, be a, we need to be a lot braver. We need to be a lot braver in our attack. We need to release some passes and give Holland a chance to make defenders defend him. Release the ball and see how the defenders react. Maybe maybe a second chance ball could be there. Maybe there's an opportunity for someone else to get in get in on on goal. But um, I'm I'm cool with this going into the international break. I just that's made of wood knocking on it. I just pray that we go into this international break out of this international break healthy. Because the, there's a reason why this league is a three-horse race again with Arsenal and Liverpool, and it's because of injuries at City. So, yeah, we need to be healthy. I, I Actually, City struggled in both aspects of the game today. The attack was not good enough, and the defense was not good enough. Ederson is the only one that deserves praise, him and Kovacic. Everyone else was below bottom, in my opinion, apart from Doku. I'm talking about the starting lineup. If it wasn't for Ederson today, Man City would have been 3-0 down. By the way, I think Ederson Diaz was good as well defensively. Diaz, I cannot praise your your defense when you when when Fulham at the Etihad had five clear cut chances. I can't like you it's see my just, point here. Yeah, but, I can't but, see no, here no, on no, match no, reaction. No. Day. Uh, how? No, no, no. But Mo, this is this is why I mentioned our midfield. Our midfield connection, I think, is why we're getting these attacking opportunities against us because I'm I'm missing a disc. There's a disconnect because yes. Triore or the wingers are getting down the pitch, but notice that these cutbacks or these balls that are brought back to the midway or top of the 18-yard box, they're falling onto the other players, keeping up with the play, running down. And Kova, uh, Gundogan, those are th those gaps. That's what I'm concerned of because it's falling to their feet. It's falling to those portions of the of the pitch where they have shots on net. I'm 
I can't really kill our defense. No, no, no. It's not about the I matrix. Do not play like that. It's the about, the, about the defense, guys. Like, Ricole was one on one. Of course, couldn't keep his priority. Uh, Jimenez was having sometimes a field day receiving the ball and turning and making fouls. And, and I, I thought City's defense wasn't good today. The attack, you guys can say whatever you are. Like, Bernardo Silva needs to be benched. What? Needs to be benched. <laughs> Bernardo how Silva. Can you, needs bro, to how be can you drop a world class player? Exactly. Like, that's, like, that's, exactly. That's you just name. You Wait, just you mean defensively he needs to be benched or what he was? No, doing? Bernardo, Bernardo right? Silva should not play on the wing for City. It should be Savino or Doku, somebody else. Wow, I thought right? he created law for us today. On no, I, I, I think you need the Savino guys. In my opinion, City. The thing about it, you play at the Etihad, you're inevitable. You're gonna win games. But again, in my opinion, City today didn't look good. I thought you got away with one. I, I no, really are they not always like this beginning of the season? Crystal Palace, they were two nil up. They yeah. came back to two. This is the, City. I'm gonna tell you the difference. This season, Arsenal and Liverpool might not give you the chance to come back. Might not give you the chance. If you look at uh, the way people talk about Arsenal and Liverpool, Liverpool had their best start under a new manager ever, ever. Mm. You right? saw how they played today against Crystal Palace. Away from home, winning one nil, they should have been two nil up in the first half. A hundred percent, Crystal pa bro. Liverpool went to Crystal Palace. They had 80% position at Crystal Palace half. Yes, but isn't it not concerning that they weren't I, able to I, score? Okay, in my opinion, unless... Okay, and, and let me ask City fans a question. Unless you guys think that Arsenal are naive, as you guys mentioned about them last season, do you guys think that if you keep doing this and you wait until the end of the season to click into gear, you will be able to catch if Arsenal keep winning like this, if Liverpool keep winning, do you guys believe these two teams are naive to let go of a lead if they create a lead for it, for themselves. Do you do you see this Arsenal team as naive? As La uh, you Hamza no, called them naive. No, no. I, I, you're right, Mo. That that part I agree with you. The part that I agree with you that City must go uh, in the transfer That's market. That's my point. The like ninety That's days, they go, ninety days, no, no. and today's a, today they need to go and get that Torino midfielder that I'm watching. Here you go. Not, here you go. So Finally, you need to you're, get that back. you're worried because yeah, this yeah, Arsenal yeah. team and more. Liverpool team don't look. More, but we got two that games that are hard. More, more, no, I'm, more. How can you be worried when you won four in a row? More. How can you be worried? <laughs> It's Listen, but can't we be, obje can we be objective though? Like as City fans, can't you guys be objective? You had two one on ones, yeah, with it Adama Troy yes, running, running through on goal. Hold on, let me speak. Yeah, you had two Adama Troy ran through your through your defense twice, and he also had a cutback. Right, that's not usual of City to be opened up like that. And he admitted home, that. Right? He admitted so, look, this. You can say he you can say it's a good, you can say it's a good win. No one's saying it and be miserable that you that you've won. But you can also sit there and say. Well, defensively, whether it's the defensive structure, whether it's the midfield and the defence not being in tandem, whatever the case may be, defensively, we were open today and we need to make sure that's not a an issue going forward because if that is, it's going to be a, a tricky run to get all the way up to January if our defence and midfield are moving like that. That's all, that's all that's been said on the panel. No one's sitting here saying that City are yeah. a horrible team now and can't defend. I, I think, I, yeah, I, I think what happens a lot, and so I'll be nice sitting back and listening, is... These are match. These are full fan highlight shows. It's talking about that game individually. Sometimes the point will be, you know, you don't you don't want to see this continue. But criticizing a problem within a particular game, I think, very different from saying City are crap, aren't they? City can't defend. We know City can defend, yeah. but yeah. they're just. And, and I think sometimes when it comes to match reaction style shows, people just almost the conversation ends up always going to a, like a. It's meant to be a bit of a macro conversation. Sorry, a, a bit of a micro, micro conversation yeah. about what's going on, rather than a macro view of everything that is, that is going on. I want to jump to some of these super chats, gents, because interest of time. Uh, this year says Mo is right. Bernardo on the right wing experiment is over. It doesn't work. We need Doku or Salvio on the right wing every game. More silver back to his real position in midfield. Uh, the two goals are you let in were in the penalty box. They should they should be worrying, right? I don't City know what that fans? means. City fans? Like, City they fans should be worried. worried that they are conceding crosses conceding and goals. chances. Yeah. Mm. They are conceding yeah. chances inside the area. It's that not Rodri. a long shot or a flu goal like mm. last season. That Rodri. Rodri normally would drop that position. But that, okay, right. so you have to, Hamza, you have to live that. There's no Rodri. Go ahead, Terry. You have to live that. There's no Rodri. No, yeah, yeah, no, no. no I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. It's, it's not just, yeah, I get that. Uh, is, if Hamza was a mate of mine, I'd change his name in my phone to waffle <laughs> okay fair enough waffle, uh terry waffle. i keep saying